Hot our uh, legends pinball Star Trek mod. Give me a um, give me a one in the chat if you came over from just watching the premiere of the Legends pinball. I want to see everybody that was there. I saw Rainwater Games was there. Philly Chick, Bobby Broadway, Tony C, Ritual Adello, Brett Roosh. Thank you guys all for um, um, for being here today. And uh, we're gonna be talking about a couple things. But first off, I am super dead tired. Yay! These are all the folks that just saw the premiere. Wait, wait, wait. I need to oh. <laughs> show you something. She's Somebody looking. said something that, uh, la, 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 la. The pinball machine would cost fifteen to $2,000. i am sure. <laughs> are, are, Dylan, are you, are you offering fifteen to 2000 Because I will take you up on 2000 for it. Why are you always trying to sell my stuff? Uh, the community loves it. Give it to them mm -hmm. for $2,000. <laughs> Rating router games. What did he say? He says, the premiere broke the internet in more ways than one. I'm speechless. Best video I've seen all year. If at games sold that pinball machine, I would totally get one. Uh, it was a labor of love. I've spent a lot of months working on it. But Jeff, I'm curious. You don't have a, a Legends pinball yet. I know that you have many things. Are you not in the pinball market yet? Um, but yeah, let e me know. Even Hollywood Polo is shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you don't have the base up uh, AOP at all. I know. So just let us know um, whatever what you thought about the video. I'm curious to see if anybody had any reactions. What did oh, you guys think? What is this? Hollywood? I think it's ugly and I hate the UI. Bees mod solves both of these issues plus upgrades basically everything. You know what? That was essentially my initial thoughts the very first time I saw the Legends pinball. When the first Legends pinball pictures came out, I was like, oh, the shape of it is weird. The art looks terrible. And um, I knew the At Game Blaze user interface was just something that was left to be desired. And when I even did a video after my review, I, I just I knew there was potential, but there was no way I was going to leave it stock using the the regular stock stuff. So that's just kind of where uh, my head was in wanting to mod it way more than I would my arcade one up. So when people were thinking about why why um why even mod both my pinball machines when I modded my arcade one up it already had a lot of things going for it. It already had a really good shape for the design of the cab being really small. Remember the Leia mm. outfit you did, right? But when you first saw the arcade one-up pinball machine, it was a good-looking cab, It right? was a good-looking cab. Yeah, it With was. The artwork. Um, the artwork was really nice. It was different types of artwork. It was smooth, it was beautiful, it was crisp. I mean, like, yeah, you had a lot of things to say about your um, at Legends pinball. But yeah. Uh, Tony C, thanks for joining us today. It's not a short stream. <laughs> that is a short stream yeah. today, yes. Good morning, Philly Chick. And yes, this is going to be an interesting topic. Yeah, so we are going to talk about T2 because we did a stream on Friday night when the news broke. Um, but uh, you think the A1 of T2 is a hoax. You don't plan to buy it at all. If, it's, if it is real, you'll stick to watching the movie. You've seen it at least 20 times. I have too. I love Terminator 2, the movie. And in fact, it's like such a pop culture thing. Even my son, who's never watched it, knows like the thumbs up going down into the lava thing it's just been used in a lot of different memes and other areas so uh i'm i'm hoping to expose the family more to t2 uh, but the the arcade game is, is super awesome so hoping to get into that soon too all right so those are all the original yeah those oh, are all the original we're oh, so behind i know goodness. on chat art is subjective it is it is subjective for sure good morning good morning um oh 
Ian's going to give us 2,500, <laughs> yes. What's up, Ian? Uh, I, Ian, we did a stream on Thursday talking about your yoke. I'm still working on it. I did a little bit of mapping the other day. I'm still not quite done. But me and Ian was asking during the um, the actual um, premiere, he was like, B, when are you going to start mass producing these pinball machines? I don't know. I don't think, I don't think pinball is something that I would think about offering my modding services that I offer to some folks because pinball is, is so deep. There's so many things that you need to do to set it up. And it's not one of those easier things where I like to provide kind of white glove full, full services um, to make sure that I can take care of everything. And, and everybody's VPN is a little bit different from the hardware to the software to setting up um, pin up popper and all that good stuff i just don't think that's one of those things that i would set up and offer but we'll see there's a lot of good folks that i can recommend that are giving guides on how to set things up like wagner's tech talk if you guys haven't checked them out um, put together a recent guide for those that have a legends pinball and wanting to set up poppers so definitely check it out flash artwork for the aop i'm not a fan of the base artwork yeah, if you want, so both Tyler Goodman from Arcade Graphics and Justin can help with doing the template. So if you want to get skins for your Legends pinball, now's the time. Like you can do it. And even Legends, the thing about Ad Games is they gave the actual PDF dimensions of the Arbor Cab, knowing that people might be interested in customizing. So for a company to know that their product was designed for modding, they pretty much did it and said, if you don't like the artwork, go ahead and do it yourself and skin it. And I had a good time coming up with the theme and I thought it looked fantastic. I thought it looked really great. Yeah, a lot of chats are coming in are definitely like uh, basically putting slamming down the artwork, the UI. It's very true. Um, having like looked at the artwork for like months at how ugly the screaming lady looked at me and like the other side, it wasn't cohesive at all. Like, is this supposed to be a, a carnival scary ride? I have no idea. The UI was um, lackluster. I mean, you sent that video to the owner. Mm -hmm. We got a, we got good feedback from the feedback we gave him. But yeah, it is very much um, very hard to get to um, to get out of a game and then having to click through so many things. So talk about the the artwork and starting to talk about behind the scenes pictures. I have a whole bunch of pictures from when I was modding it. That I don't even know if uh, Mrs. Kong's arrest remembers the day that I, I unskinned my Legends pinball and she came out afterwards like in her pajamas like, what are you doing? And I'm like, just come over here and hold this. And <laughs> do you remember taking that picture? Yeah. So uh, th is this how you really feel about that original artwork? <laughs> was that the um, Screaming Lady one? It was the screaming lady kind oh, of no, like. That was like the genie thing, and I was like, "What?" Is this? Yeah, I mean that's both original side panels. So I pretty much just got rid of both sides. So you can also click it there too if you want to. Um, and that's that's how I I wanted to reskin everything because I could have just applied the art directly onto the vinyl itself. But um, when I I got my ALP, the vinyl was already peeling a little bit on one of the corners. So I was worried that if I put the new Star Trek artwork over it that I would have issues with it um, peeling later on. So I decided to just go the route of ultimately taking all the way off. Um, but <laughs> that was a fun picture that Mrs. Kongzeras had. And, uh, you know, I thought that was fun. So you just another one. She's like, thumbs down. <laughs> I think she taped it to herself. <laughs> you're just getting weird. So if you're thinking about ever putting together an artwork dress for yourself, this is what an ALP would look like if you made it a dress. On would one you, side. Is that something that you would wear? No. No, you don't. You don't. You wouldn't wear the multicolor uh, Legends pinball artwork as a dress. <laughs> Tony C says the genie is the only good part of the ALP stock artwork. And, and again, art is subjective, but it's just one of those things that didn't really appeal to me. Uh, the Legends looks like it plays better than the arcade one, up in my opinion. And you've owned both. Um, it looks and plays better. It looks subjective, right? It, it, like I thought the the design of the ba the stock back box with the with the back glass DMD, um, it just didn't look right to me. So you know when Bobby I, and when I I knew I wanted to mod the back box so bad, and so thank you to Bobby wherever he is. I know he joined really late last time, um, but he made the back box of my dreams to really put that twenty four inch screen plus the 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 other piece of it so that was that was pretty awesome to get that and then from there i just i just took off and did everything else and um what's up complete geek tv appreciate what's going on yeah 
All right, Brad, uh, the bundled games on the A1 up versus V pins much better than the e a a a ALP. Again, also kind of subjective versus the Zen pinball, non tr like real pinball games versus the Gottlieb games are based off of real titles. I think the gameplay and the usability of the Zen tab tables, like for Arcade One Up, they have some more mass appeal than I think the Gottlieb tables did. I've never seen any of the stock. 22 Gottlieb tables in an arcade in my entire life. And granted, I'm, I guess, a little bit younger having those classic pinball machines ever, but I've not played Haunted House or ever seen a black hole anywhere. Even today, like even if I went to the pinball museum, it's hard to find some of those classic games. So I didn't grow up appreciating them, but I like the IPs on the arcade one up. And I'm slowly, slowly starting to gain more appreciation for some of the other pinball machines out there. So it just kind of really depends. Bobby is an artist for sure. You want a Bobby Vu back box one day? Yeah, so I mean, I don't know if he's still taking orders, but um, he's done at least three of them so far. So at least for me, UAG has one, uh, a Marvel one, and then he did one for another client as well. But if you if you want one from a store, um, I heard Buy Stuff Store is gonna be putting together their own back box that's very similar for shipping and you can buy one and, and it'll automatically be CNC'd perfectly. And I, I don't, I think it even comes with monitors too. Um, so we'll have to see if you're, if you can't get it from Bobby, I know buy stuff store is doing some good stuff. So I can't wait to see what they do and, and, and see how the community is, is putting together their own back boxes or their own mods, because this, I feel like truly makes the at games legends pinball worth it. Once you can mod that back box to a bigger design, what are you eating? My negri noodles. You're eating eating spicy noodles on a Sunday morning. With cheese. With cheese. With cheese. My goodness. All right. And so we also have just this morning, um, I have some orange green tea here. I drank my coffee, but I'm still sleepy. I stayed up. <laughs> I stayed up super late last night working on that video because we we're working on a topic for today. And I was like, I really want to just talk about this this Legends of Pinball mod and, and get it done because we've been filming for the last couple of weeks and I had all this B-roll. And so I stayed up till 5 a.m. my time so I can finish the video for the premiere and got about two hours of sleep. You're always, you're always like that. Last minute man. <laughs> last at minute, minute man. Or at midnight, he's like, I'm going to work on this video. And I'm like, well, how many hours is that going to take? <laughs> all right good luck to you so my 10 minute video takes me about four to five hours of editing so it's just one of those things where edited videos take so long but i liked it i really liked them um, the editing process because um i did a script this time around i got mrs kong's arrest involved for for reading it so hopefully you guys like the balance of doing those i like editing when i can get to it it just takes a lot much more oh time. my god even like filming the b-roll filming me like <laughs> i don't know if you could tell like i'm reading the script I'm tired. Yeah. And he's like, read it again. <laughs> you read it again. Uh, Majinian says, women like her spicy stuff. That's right. You do like your spicy. Yeah. Oh, wait. Philly Chick said, if you go down yeah. to her comment, mm -hmm. it says, I yeah. like to... Uh... I like to play some of the Oda Gottlieb tables at the Las Vegas Pinball Museum. Yeah, so they we should go look for it there. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the new Vegas... They got a brand new location. Yeah, you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a huge... We used to go to the old location several times, but that would be cool to... Now that I have better appreciation for pinball, seeing stuff out in the wild, I'm definitely going to be hunting for more pinball machines because I've been telling Mrs. Kong to us now that I have a real Star Wars pinball machine, a mechanical one, that I've like kind of caught a bug for pinball and want to explore playing more, possibly own another one at no. one point. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. What's up, Ricardo? Appreciate you. Kong is a slave driver. Eh. I don't know about that to himself <laughs> to myself but um i i did did really push mrs kong's arrest to um um to to do a lot so i have i will share some more of my screen so that you guys can see um let's do window or screen entire screen i guess i can do this one will this one work no i'm just gonna share my entire screen all right so you can look over here now okay all right, here we go. 
All right, so here is uh, some now background backstage photos of our Legends Pinball Mod. So you can see uh, Mrs. Kongzerus being so awesome in her Deanna Troy outfit. Hopefully you guys like this Deanna Troy outfit. I was trying to think about what would be the best Star trek -y thing to do. And I was looking at Star Trek costumes because Mrs. Kongzerus is so awesome. Uh, I saw this outfit and was like, yes, Deanna Troy season one. I forgot she was wearing a dress um, because I wanted that classic uniform and was like, oh can should i put her in a full uniform but yeah there weren't that many people that actually wore the starfleet uniform dress with uh deanna troy did in the first um first season and she had boots on she had that curly hair um so this was awesome to have mrs kong to dressed up thought she looked fantastic you would make an excellent starfleet officer do you think you'd be fun as counselor troy i don't know but i don't know if y'all are noticing but i'm trying to sit on, on the glass because i know he said it was tempered glass but i was terrified my weight would crack something <laughs> so there's a, a an art of balancing part of your arm so that you can hold the weight on the side of it and mm -hmm. not touch the glass itself we have so many of these like little outtakes too of just mrs kong Zeres smiling so beautifully and slowly touching that pinball machine. <laughs> and there are uh, kitty litter in the background. I know, and a kitty litter in the background. And so I'm telling Mrs. Kong Zeros here, I'm like, Mrs. Kong Zeros, all right, so can you uh, just show off the artwork? And she starts like going slowly over each letter. And I'm like, the B roll's too low, do it again. I'm like a slave driver. I'm like, do it again, do it again, <laughs> do it again, do it again. We have all these takes <laughs> of you just looking at the artwork. And then, so I, I had written a script for me to, to you know kind of talk while she was doing stuff but this is just an example but yeah here's some more nice little photos that i didn't get to use of her smiling oh i love these photos actually i think no rainwater really everybody's looking at the kitty litter <laughs> uh this is fun yeah so i think these photos look really nice i was like hmm, what would be the best thumbnail photo that was the other thing too i was trying to like work on lighting and everything. Mrs. Kong's arrest is looking really cute in her Troy outfit. Oh yeah, the legs of the machine. I have to call out the, mm -hmm. so I mean, yes, that I would <laughs> legitimately say that's more than a few thousand dollar machine because of all the time you took um, re-taping the, the sidebars yeah. and then the legs too. You want to talk about the legs? Yeah, I, I saw I replaced the entire legs as well. So those aren't the stock legs. I, I, I swapped them out for real pinball legs that were chrome, but <laughs> watch this, this, watch this behind the scenes video. And when I asked Mrs. Kong's arrest to showcase looking at Jean-Luc Picard. Okay, maybe it was this one, ready? All right, here we go. Here's, oh, maybe it was the other one. Okay, I think it was the end of this one. Oh, where was it? Oh, for your eyes only, it What's seems. That? <laughs> I think it was this one. I swear there was a. Oh, I don't think I recorded it. Oh, um, you didn't record it. I didn't. She act the first time I recorded her looking like saying something, and she was she actually licked his face. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot to record it and I was saying this. Oh, I think Raymarder was game. This and we did a million shots of Mrs. Kong the Russ playing with the legs because you know, them legs. So I was like, hmm, she kept going down. She kept bending down and going up. But I'm like, this is a weird angle. I'm like, do it again. And so I'm like, look, this is me just slide driving. I'm like, all the way over. Again, again, again. I know, I got so tired again. of stop flexing my calves. Again. Again, flex, flex. He kept going down, up, down, up, down, up. What, what could I do? And then this finally, it was up, down. That's more natural. That's the way we needed to do it. So. Oh my God, Tony uh, C said, can I borrow Mrs. Kong's dress in that outfit for Comic Con in Seattle? <laughs> you know what? I'll give you the outfit for the Seattle Comic Con. <laughs> However you want to use it, it's up to you. Yeah, I don't know. We have all these extra costumes that we don't know what to do with afterwards. But yeah, you can kind of see a little behind the scenes too. Like uh, this costume was a little bit bigger. And so you can see that on her back, we had to kind oh of pin God. it in the back. So yeah, I didn't really see, so you can see the, the safety pins in the back. So we couldn't do a lot of back shots because it was a little bit bigger and it was like a super small costume as well. Um, so those are some of the back shots. And we did, this is funny. We tried to do it to die for. And she goes to die three. <laughs> <laughs> to die three. Uh, those are some good ones there. Um, Bobby says he wants a, a P Dub's version of wearing that dress. And oh then, um, yeah, Ricardo Alonzo. Uh -huh. Sorry, I can't. You can click on Eli it too. It'll Alonso. show up on the screen too. 
So and you can watching the um, Star Trek Next Generation right now. I'm oh, sorry. nice, it's nice. Butchered your name. Yeah, you could always do that too. So this is, I think, this is gameplay. Oh. Was that a was that a fan service shot there? Did you guys like that? Sorry. <laughs> this is my fan service shot. Woo 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 woo! Fan service. You know. You could have told me how to flex out those calves. Flex those calves. So this is her playing front line. Um, so yeah, I did a little bit of gameplay there. I had to move everything around on the backside, so I didn't do shots from this side that often because I had my Legends or my Star Wars pinball in the background. Um, what other things that? That didn't make the cut. All right, so there's a here's a series of stuff where Mrs. Kong Zero started crawling underneath the table, and I didn't. <laughs> she was like sleepy, and I was like, I didn't, I didn't use any of these shots in the actual video. It's like that was sleepy time. Sleepy time. She was like under the table. I'm just point to stuff, touch po things. Like, point uh... to stuff. I should just touch things. I was like, oh, I probably should have. I was getting sleepy. This was around like 4 a.m. when I got to this part of the cab, and I'm like. Um, I don't know what to do next, but yeah, <laughs> Mrs. Kong's are us now falling My asleep. Trash panda. Huh? Oh, you found yeah. a trash panda. Neoguri means um, raccoon in Korean. Raccoon. This, this is Mrs. Kong's are us underneath playing some centipede and some other stuff, playing more things. I really like these shots. You have great legs, by the way. If I had ever told you, I you like these You don't want to read the shots. chats at this point. Why is that? Um, what are they saying? We'll do another money shot for, for everybody who's watching. But ba bam. This is what everybody came for, the behind the scenes. And then eventually she's smiling, looking really cute. And then this is finally the end of our photo shoot. So thank you, Mrs. Kong's arrest. I appreciate you so much for uh, sticking up and uh, <laughs> hanging out and, um, you know, sticking through this because it's uh, – this is pretty much her face at the end of the stream to the point where she was afterwards just going, I'm sleepy. She's like, are we done yet? This is the teaser at the very end where she just kind of fell over and then fell asleep at the end of it. So <laughs> No, you're telling me to get down and like start pointing at the vents. And I said, well, you figure out what you need to do. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. That's uh, That was the behind the scenes look at our Legends Pinball mod video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, <laughs> okay, screenshot time. Just kidding. You can always replay whatever you want to. Um, what else what did I miss here? I would love to buy a Stern someday. They're just so expensive. It would have to go in the basement. Maybe one day. It is expensive, but I it's... I don't know how much. I mean, it's public knowledge. Like, the Stern Pros are starting around 6000 and the premiums are around 7800 And then the limited editions are, like, close to $9,000, $10,000. If you buy them new, new in box, and you can find them. So it's a huge investment, but you know, honestly, I I couldn't be happier with my Star Wars pin. Even though I paid, I overpaid because I bought a used pinball for the same price as a brand new one. Uh, it was a thrill of the auction, but it's it was worth it to me to have it in my collection to round it out. So if you can get one, I would recommend it. The whole point, but the whole problem is like if you had to pick one pinball to own because they're so expensive, what would it be? And it, for me, it was Star Wars. But there's a lot of IPs out there that you can get. She she got the dress a little large so she can send it to P-Dubs. Did you see that? Uh, such a good sport, I believe. Hubba hubba. What up? What's up, Endangered Dog? What's going on? If you think V-Pin setup is a challenge, try working on solid state mechanical pinball table. Watch out. Yeah. Uh, I had my first thing break on my Star Wars pinball. I was playing with it, and the pin that goes up in the lane where the star star Death Star is, popped out and I was like, oh no, it actually like popped off onto the actual play field. So the other day, Mrs. Kong goes, what are you doing? And I had the entire glass off. I had the whole thing flipped upside down, but it was really cool to get in there. I can't wait to do more modifications and understand my pinball machine more. I think it's going to be fun for me as a tinkerer to, to learn the process of owning a pinball machine and uh, learning it out. But hello, hello. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So I do want to talk a little bit about our next subject, but do you see anything else in chat? People want to see P dubs in shorts. <laughs> yeah. Want to see the P dubs in shorts. I don't know about that. Miss P, P dubs does some interesting try on hauls where he puts on interesting clothes. But um, yeah, uh, you know, P dubs is one to please fans and flans. And you never know what the guy might do. But he did not have a very strong opinion 
about this guy though. So when we are talking about, and I know I just covered up my face, this is the second half of our topic and kind of the lead topic, which was, <laughs> hello, <laughs> how are you? Hello. <laughs> um, Terminator 2 Arcade 1 Up. This is just one of those things that as soon as it came out, I, I was looking for Arcade 1 Ups that had unique control. So the minute I saw this, I was like, finally, we're getting something that's not sticks and buttons that, you know, from an emulation standpoint is so easy. Arcades is truly are enjoyable by having unique controls to that particular arcade game. And that's what I want rounded out in my arcade. I want these unique control games. And so that was the first thing that I gravitated to was seeing it and was just like, wow, like this, this looks like a traditional T2. But then I started digging in and during my live stream, I was like, I, the curtain started pulling back on my excitement for everything um, just because um, I couldn't I couldn't unsee what I saw on the pictures. And I'm hoping that these are still early renders. So I'm, uh, I'm curious about what people see or thinking about it because this, I have one here, is a true positional rail gun. So granted, this is not the uh, a T2 rail gun. This is the aliens extermination gun that I bought from AliExpress, but um, yeah, it comes with the base model like this, but this is how a true pot uh, positional gun works. It's mounted and then you have a potentiometer that goes in the back right here for moving it left and right. I'm gonna move it left and right, move it. Yeah. And then when it goes up and down, yeah, there's a there's another pot on the back side that go that that registered just up and down. So you, you have limited range of movement and you're just moving it up and down. And then that's how you're actually moving the cursor across the screen. So this is what I thought would be in the T2. I was hoping to have this and just holding it and going like that. And again, this the tips aren't a light gun. Um I, I was hoping to get this plug-in and working. But the using a light gun for a positional shooter is just it's um it's disappointing i'm hoping that that's not the case because to the drag on using a light gun for a position positional gun is is there even with the gun for ir or the sindin if and as much as i play the sindins and i was playing t2 with it you can move it and it's close to accurate but there's still a little bit of drag like it's still like not as accurate as moving it quickly there so um you're gonna have to some some uh, gameplay experience let down by using the light gun Will the guns in T2 suck as bad as the sticks and buttons on an A cut one up, or are they better like the Star Wars work? Yoke. Uh, if any indication of the Buck Hunter guns that they came out with, those Buck Hunter guns were a little cheap on the quality side. You remember holding those guns, right? Super they, plastic. They felt super yeah. plasticky and cheap. Yeah. And so if they're gonna use that level of plastic in the guns, like I felt at one point the Buck Hunter guns, the shaft could break. It it felt really thin and 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 oh, it broke for some people, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It got so shipped broken. It got shipped broken, and then I added weights in mine to kind of make it more heftier and, and weigh it out. Um, but that's that was one of the things that, in terms of quality, I can, I think we can expect similar. It's using a smaller mold, the Uzi, so maybe it's a little bit more solid. But yeah, I don't know if they'll they'll ever go back to reaching the quality of the yoke because the yoke plastic was was pretty dang pretty dang awesome. Irene Mars says, I agree. You need controls, you need cheap. You dig it. I hope it's good. This is a hard pass for me if it's only one game. I do hope that they do add more games to it. Again, the, the list of positional rail gums is, is, is pretty decent. You know, I put together a Star Wars playlist for gun games, and I, originally I included mostly gun games that had this positional analog shooter game. So Operation Wolf, Mechanized Attack, Steel Gunner 1 and 2, Revolution X, Alien 3, The Gun. Um, these are all kind of good games you can play using the positional. Even, I think, Jurassic Park. Um, Jurassic Park, the original um, game, had a cursor on the screen that you had to drag left or right, too. So I, I, I don't know for sure, but I feel like that was another positional game, too. Um, another current one, Luigi's Mansion, right? So Luigi's Mansion Arcade was a one that you can just have as a positional uh, mounted gun too so you can play luigi's mansion but in terms of the what could run on a cab like this it would be those older classic games but those are a good number of games Richard, Gotta run, folks. let us know where this new arcade complex Ooh, is oh ah, i want to get to an arcade soon all this arcade talk we got to take the family to an arcade that would be really awesome all right i'm going to keep just going down uh, then put your glasses on kong i'm thinking they will close out 
closed, but no one uses iron sights, so it will work still. I'm not sure what that was referring to. All right, looks like the control panel needs to be a little bit bigger and the gun's a little bit towards the back. Yeah, if they, I don't know why Arcade 1UP doesn't do this. For, for some arcades that have the screen mounted towards the back in a real cab, I think they have the space within the cab to do that, to mount it further back and have the plexi up front or even just have the whole thing seated further back with an open space. I, I Maybe they just don't have the design for it, but that would make this cab so much better if they if they sh scooted that screen back. So that might be a mod I would do if I got the cab itself is to how to seat that that mount that actual screen further back so I can mount something there and do it there. But I don't I don't know. I feel like I would get the cab only to dissect it to understand what the guns are for modding purposes. And because um, if I was building my own cab, I have like these real guns that I've been wanting to to put onto something. Um, but yeah, I would do it mostly for science just to see what the what the guns are and how it breaks down. So I'm I did that for Big Buck. I had no interest, honestly, in Big Buck Hunter. I never played in the arcade. I had zero interest in owning the game, but I was so curious about the technology that I bought it. <laughs> and so this is the tinker in me that I might do the same thing with T2. If it's using some newer tech, if it's not a send in or something else, I would definitely think about, um, you know, buying it just for the sake of, of science and breaking it down, doing a review, and then maybe not ultimately keeping it. T2 looks nice, but the more I think about it, uh, it's meh. I was excited when I first saw it, but it went up needs to start providing us with more bang for our, for our money. It's getting expensive. It looks like the price point is was Canadian 850, but it's going to be, around 650 699 price us um which i i i'm okay with for those higher prices with newer technology cabs like this if they're going out of the box and they're using more parts that you feel like you're getting more money because they're using more unique parts i can justify the higher cars it was hard for like seeing a teenage mutant ninja turtles cab they re recently released a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cab for Turtles in Time. It was purple, but it was almost it was exact same games as the original Turtles cab, but it was seven hundred dollars instead of four hundred dollars when we got ours. So interesting. Yeah, it was just a really huge price increase. That for sticks and buttons, I don't know how you can justify that really. I think right. having a live leaderboard will justify not having multi games. Live leaderboards actually do add some replayability value to it. It competition really ble breeds into that gameplay where you know maybe it's a one life thing where you can challenge yourself. The challenge of a game when you are gunning for something makes that experience way better than when I'm um, just putting an in infinite coin. So I don't know. I think it it does add value. Is it enough though? I don't know. I, I would like to see at least another game or two. And it's it's hard. It's I'm surprised that they didn't have anything else. Only thing I don't like about T2 is that you literally need two people to beat the game. It's a hard game. Yeah, maybe I saw I saw Michael B doing a gameplay video of it yesterday, and he was playing by himself with a mouse on trackball on his Legends pinball, I think, or his Legends something. Um, but yeah, maybe we should play T2 together and then and do a some gameplay video of us playing the game. It's a really hard game. Oh, Bobby sure. explained that earlier comment. The comment was when you said um, ball was being lifted for about if it, if T two was any good. I still don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said ball was being lifted about if T two was any good. All right. Um, I'm trying to go back and just look at every single chat comment to see if I missed anything else. Game Room Solutions had a shooter cab for the build that might be a better option. Yeah, so I actually bought the Game Room Solutions shooter cab, and I have it at Bobby Vu's house, and he modded it and put a big, uh, a wider, I think a twenty, a Wait, twenty-two what? or twenty-four inch screen. Keep you, it another. You haven't seen it yet. It's um, I I I have a a Bobby. Keep it at your house. <laughs> I have a shooter cab in the works. And it's going to be a point blank theme that I was, I really love point blank as, as a theme. And so I have the guns. It's just one of the cabs that I'm putting together sneak peek preview, but I have that GRS cab. I need to, I need to go finish it up though. We need to get going with that. It's a good diversion considering how much RK went up has been missing up PR wise. I have no idea what, what, what a one up is doing in terms of the communication strategy. It's, it's been lacking. So we've not heard anything from arcade one up since ces in january like they went dark wow. in terms of communicating to the public they used Makes to have 
remember John D who used to come troll us with stickers and things. He used to be very active in the social media posts and be doing YouTube things. But how do you think about a company, I guess, communicating with their fan base? Like, how do you think companies should be communicating with their fan base? Should it be through press releases? Should it be through leaks like this? Any thoughts about that? Yeah, definitely through leaks through the community. I mean, like you think about press releases, it's very like uh, it's us telling you, but we don't know how it's being communicated. But the more you can get out to the community, the more you can have the community help you advocate. It makes it stronger. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Mitchell Dello, real support retro arcades. If you seat the screen further back with the marquee block line of sight, though, if it's really tall, I mean, really short. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's probably why they're not further back. Uh, you make a, you bring up a good point, Rainwater Games. Well, if I do that mod, I'd have to see what it would look like. Might have to raise the riser, pretty much. You got an M41A pulse rifle. Is that is that what this is from the <laughs> the uh, aliens? Uh, I think so. I'm I'm sad to say I'm not as familiar with <laughs> all the the aliens lore and gear, but it sounds like it. All right, see my sensors. Do you like? Oh, we already talked about that one. I'd rather do the railgun box mod with a bigger TV. Yeah, so. I mean, the good thing about rail guns is they really don't need to be close to anything at all. I was thinking about just mounting these to a uh, a pedestal and then having it um, be mobile so I can just play on a big screen TV. So I think that's that's what, what I do. All right, you're jumping around. Trying I'm sorry, to, I wasn't okay. clicking stuff. Okay. <laughs> the 17 inch monitor compromised real estate due to Sindon technology makes up for a one up light game with the undersized display for this type of game. Needs to be a minimum of 19 inches. You know, when we look at the screen on the actual this, this is interesting. Like the borders of where the game ends and where the side bezel artwork are, they did an interesting of kind of almost blending that bezel artwork into the 17 inch screen. It almost it almost looked like a bigger screen deceptively because the artwork kind of blends into the background. Mm. But so, but this is normally a 17 inch screen that you would see there. I, I would have hoped that they would use a bigger monitor, but we just know that's probably not ever the case that they would. And I, I don't know what the tech is. I don't know if that border, that intentional square border around the edges is enough for send in tech to pick up that border. It might, it might, it might be the border that's needed to to do that. So I'm curious about that. Um, like you, I want to mod it. I do too. I want to mod it. More value is needed. I hope they get the controls right. I do too. What's up, Project Zero Three? Hello, hello. This is Brandon. He's a good Macross collector. What's going on? Oh, and it's Mrs. Kong's arrest. Mrs. Kong's arrest. That's right. Mrs. Kong is my mom. She's Mrs. Kong's arrest. <laughs> for all the reminders out there. Kamala says arcade one up doesn't provide an arcade gaming experience, just an arcade museum experience. In your opinion, mm -hmm. you know, Kamala, I think I I saw that post that you put on Scarlet Sprites's um, video that he did. He did an excellent video, by the way explaining the light gun versus positional railgun shooter tech and it's it's really driving nostalgia nostalgia is what drives people to buy rk one ups it's the reason why i bought my first one i saw street fighter 2 two and a half years ago and i was like i want to get it and the first time i saw it i was like i have to play on my knees i didn't buy a riser or anything but the arcade museum experience instead of truly getting to the gameplay experience of it I'd say there's a good percentage of people that like looking at their cabs more than actually just playing everything. And that's definitely me. I clicked that. Okay. What did it say? Wait, the Game Room Solutions T2 Shooter Cab is only $2.99. Am I missing something or is this the whole? Oh, it's no, it's just the cab. It's just the blank cabinet with artwork. You have to provide the monitor, the controls, the gun, everything else. Game Room Solutions just gives you the shell of something. And then it costs extra for the actual design artwork. And they already have some design artwork that you can apply or you can ask them for a custom design. But yeah, you'd have to provide everything yourself, including the guns and everything too. All right, let's see up here. So uh, we already talked about that one. Hey, Bobby B, are these alien guns would be amazing for like a mod, but I could see them on a pedestal with a huge TV. Agreed, exactly. We just talked about that. So that might happen, by the way. <laughs> I need to build a pedestal. I need to get Bobby Vu to build me a pedestal or something else because I don't have... Uh... Bobby, you can keep that at your house as well. <laughs> pedestal build. <laughs> That's my ultimate gun build. Like, have these mounted as a pedestal and then have s guns, like, on the side too. So that's, that's the big debate that I have now. So the light guns is the next big mod. If you saw what I did with Star Trek pinball, that's what I want to do for light guns. I want to do a true awesome light gun build and everything but i i need to kind of 
pick my brain, my own brand on, or other people's brains on how to do it. Whether I want to do a positional pedestal with this and then have icons on the side or have two separate ones, I have my point blank cab. I don't know. I might have to just step around and do different things. 700 bucks, T2 will be a great cab. Yeah, it's it's good. It's a lot of money if that's the new price point, but it's a unique control. I can see a lot of people jumping on it just because it's something that's out of the norm. T2 needs a bigger screen. How will it work with the 17 inch screen? Hi, field reporter Brad. That's right. It should be five or 600 max. I knew, I guess pricing is going to be subjective. How do you, how do you feel about RK went up pricing going up? We never really talked about it, but um, normally the, the most expensive cab they previously had was about 500 bucks, 550. And now they're jumping up to 700, 600 Yeah, that's bucks. insane. I don't know how y'all are collecting all these <laughs> arcades. But it's, so here's a, an example of a price jump. The Star Wars pinball that I bought. When I first bought it, I believe it was $500. No, no, no. It was like $600, maybe $650, like retail. The exact same cab was sold out, and now it's being resold again at $850. Oh, so, Arcade One Up? Same product, $200 what? price increase for the exact same product because of supply and other things too. Oh, I know yeah. their company's doing that right now, and I'm yeah. not very happy with them. Are you? Do you yeah. other companies? Oh, oh no, I'm your personal companies personal companies yeah. oh, okay yeah. and it's insane like you know you you see the market you drive it up you make the people pissed off but you do it yeah. anyways yeah 599 699 is a bit too far yeah it's hard to to know what you would pay for but it really depends on how you want to do it i want all you content makers to have brad on your show that's a field reporter <laughs> the game is not great if the game is not great why buy it if you talk about t2 it is great it's a great game definitely I don't understand why if we're going to get raised prices 25%, the uh, sent upgrade to 19, um, 20 inch cost, cost them $10 to do it. I don't know. I wouldn't speculate about pricing because even monitors use some of the, the supplies of the, the chip shortages and other things like glass, right? I think glass was in shortage too, right? Did you Have you heard about that? There's like a glass yeah, shortage glass, too. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know about the monitor size being really cheap for them. It could be, could be, but we've never seen it. So I don't ever expect them to increase uh, the monitor size. It would be crazy if they did. You'd love to have time crisis though. Yeah. Time. I bought some time crisis pedals. Remember that? That'd be fun. We got to do a time crisis mod too. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Just revealed uh, his You're purchaser. Behind. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Mrs. Kongs. Mrs. Kongs are us. You're in the field in, in this weekend. Way back. All right, complete. If some quality improvements were made, that would be one thing. I still think Marvel Superhero Sandwall Sticks with the Light Up Mercury for $3.99 was a sweet spot. Yeah, when they did offer that, I don't know how many people were super excited about getting that because. Even though Samwall sticks feel better, if you're still playing it by yourself with somebody else in that cab, like you don't need crazy controls if you're not being that competitive. This is interesting game point. Like one of one of the reasons for having really good quality controls is that if you are a competitive person that's going for high scores, if you're playing against somebody else, if you're the casual person that is just playing because of that museum experience that Kamala just said, the stock buttons and sticks are gonna do you just fine. In fact, for a beat em up game like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I didn't even bother changing the sticks and buttons because I'm just walking around slamming the button to beat up on people. There's no accuracy truly needed to play those games, but something like a fighting game where you need that accuracy was the only, like that you have to have to change. So I would say if, if there's games like that that require that precision, like fighting games and especially the online play, that's where I would like to see the quality button to stick. Some of the older other games, I guess it kind of depends on where how you feel about it. But that's you know for beat em ups, I don't think you really need to change them out. But yeah, the, it's gonna change the price. Morning everyone, what's going on, Killer Penguins? I would buy it one uh, one minute minute one if someone got the machine gun Sindins working on Raspberry Pi. Hmm. Yeah, Sindins and Pies don't work quite well that yet. So control our guilt. <laughs> RK went up T2. Hell yeah. Second favorite pinball game other than Pinbots. Oh, so we were talking about the T2 RK one up, not the T2 pinball machine. So there is a T2 pinball machine, um, but uh, this is the kind of leaked pictures of the arcade one up version of T2 arcade game. Um, so not necessarily talking pinball, but I saw it. I saw a Rise of the Machines, the Terminator 3 pinball Michelle machine for sale locally for like around $3,000. <laughs> That's a pretty good deal, I think, but I'm not a T3 fan, though. But, um, yeah, I, I would be interested in a T2 pinball machine. All right, wait, uh, we talked about that. Played T3 pinball about an hour yesterday. Yeah, that one's that was a great pinball machine. Oh, okay, so you really like the T3 one. That's good, Brad. It's in common for what pinball with real pinballs. All right, it's just the wood. All right, Big Buck would need 
I'm like really behind. Okay, not that behind. Big Buck would need a custom software wrapper as it just ends up being a fancy webcam without the software. Yes, Robin Rising, uh, Mrs. Kong's Arrest knows from the Buck Hunter review that um, it is just a fancy webcam and she likes the webcams, right? You're dual, dual, dual building webcams there. Um, oh, there's another piece of an accessory that we might be getting soon. Remember how the, the horns on the marquee were flat? Were flat and not very pointy. Not hard. Not hard. Uh, we might be getting a light up marquee from Angel Ortero Jr. So I said, if you send us a, a, an accessory for Buck Hunter, we might have to ask you to revisit your, your Buck Hunter personality. All right. All right. Cringy. Thumbs up if you want to see some more Buck Hunter reviews. But yeah, we're, I'm sure she's excited about it. I don't know how you guys were able to watch it. Just cringe the entire time. Like, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, there needs to be a minimum of 19 inches. That's what she said. Ha 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 ha. The guns must rest in the square areas. If those are locked in place, then it's GG if it's an active fail. Agree. Yeah. It's um, they're not using the pots right. It's gonna be gonna be hard to get behind light guns for that. T3 needed Edward Furlong's ugly ass. <laughs> oh no, it's it's not T2 pinball. Yeah. So good morning. Still making breakfast. What's up, Mike? I know it's not RK one up or no real okay, but they're still fun and executed well. Yep. Oh goodness. Uh, we it's got a lot Lucy of too, Mrs. Kong. Thumbs up in one hundred. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Oh, this is for yeah, uh this is Buck. From for buck this hunter, is buck hunters. only bucks. <laughs> a lot of thumbs up for wanting to see Mrs. Kong's of us in the in her buck out. It will return. The buck hunter will return at some point. In fact, uh, if you want to, I was thinking about what other fun videos to tease up and and have that style of a video. But I, I I've always I I still have this video teed up and. Um, ah! Uh, I think I'm gonna do my IRK review finally, but we're gonna have Mrs. Kong do do in her box. Oh, Mr. Kong's arrest, thanks for saving me. I should have showed that to P Dubs to cheer him up. <laughs> he was so excited. He was so bummed the other day when we were like talking about T2. And it's like, is there anything I can do to cheer him up? I should have played that video for, for P Dubs, but I think I might do a Buck Hunter esque review of the IR arcade featuring Mrs. Kong's So I think that's it's been on my big to do. I had the script kind of written about you traveling around a medieval place with some dark, damp areas and something I think would be another ripe ripe for fun video to do some things as well is Buck Hunter will return in Moonraker <laughs> Curly B needs to mod a plin playboy pinball cabinet so I can have a, a nice review of it is that what you're talking about <laughs> I think he's making a suggestion there was a playboy pinball machine also for sale locally too that uh, I gotta send that to Bobby Mrs. Kong's Russ's personality makes videos so fun I agree Hey, what's up? Zohar has a 499 super chat that says, if those guns are removable, RK one up has officially confirmed they've never played this machine, does not care enough about doing any testing or research. I think that's untrue, Zohar. They've played the machine, but they are a company that is full of compromise and uh, feasibility, right? So they have to find out what the best, most feasible way is to bring something to the home arcade market. And I think they've played it, but they're willing to make the compromise. So it just depends, you know, I'm curious about RK1UP's vision mission statement. If it's, we're just going to bring you nostalgia or if we're going to bring you kind of true home arcade gameplay, because that could really help change the direction of how they design things moving forward. Like something, the, the replicates or the, the new wave toys, right? Those are very clear that they're true replicas in a small form factor size, and that's their vision. And Arcade One Up has really given us a vision more of we just want you to have something that looks like the arcade, and they've, they've never really truly gotten to the core of gameplay experience. And it's hard doing that as a multi cade when there's one skin, but then multiple games on the cab. All right. Playboy Pinball is, uh, is a boring machine. T2 is too pricey. We'll keep my shooter games along with T2 on one of your mods. Having a Sindin is a huge plus. Yes, agree. Kiss is your uh, favorite classic pinball. Is it flat pack? What if the guns on the rods allowed them to raise up and emulate the controls? Uh, hmm. That's a possibility. Like if it just telescopes and moves up and then it moves, like I didn't see anything in there 
why they wouldn't do that in the first place. So that's kind of weird if they would have something that telescope, but then I don't know why they would have the cords there still. So, I mean, it's possible. Arcade authentic. Compromise one up. That sums it up nicely. Yep. The base would swivel. Possibly. For nice super chat. Thanks, so. Art. Compromise is just a nice way of saying they don't care enough to try harder for our customers. Yeah. It, the communication is sorely lacking. So the, the not care enough portion of it, I think a lot of us can feel that way when there's a company that we've had strong ties to and have vested so much money into them and having them in our, our homes. Um, but us as a passionate fan base, though, is it's hard to separate what the passionate fan base wants and cares about versus the masses that they're selling to as well. I did find out, though, that the the bigger market is is going a little bit down for arcade one up to the general public i walked i went to walmart yesterday by the way <laughs> just to like do my casual i'm gonna walk by the arcade one up section to see what they have but like my local walmart no longer has a dedicated arcade one up section it's gone like i i went there and when i picked up my miss pac-man arcade one ups from them when they're on clearance I guess they cleared them out because they don't want them there anymore. There's zero arcade one-ups in that entire store. I saw one riser that was hidden. It didn't even have like a label for it. So the the availability of them for the mass public is actually, I feel like, dropping a little bit. That's why they have to do these online sales versus having brick and mortar places holding them anymore. So it's a guy you mostly buy arcade one-ups with unique controls. The cables are short. They are. In your opinion, how much improvement is there by just upgrading this joystick six springs for stock hardware, specifically for fighting games? Huge, huge, huge improvement. Like the stock, the stock sticks and buttons are trash. I'll tell you that. They've not changed them since the very beginning. The buttons are super mushy. They hurt if you're playing fighting games for, for a fighting game where you have to like smash it to do a super. Like it rubs against your hands. And so it's a huge improvement for tactile feel. And then even the, the clickiness of your joysticks, a lot of it is preference though. I, and I didn't, have, I didn't even update the springs on my Samba joysticks. Um, but you know, there's, there's people that prefer the IL HAP traditional American style joysticks and buttons versus the Samba Japanese style buttons that you might see, but it's a huge, some huge improvement. Comments about your Walmarts. My Walmart hasn't had arcade one up for a long time. The space has been empty the last six months. Oh, Everyone the, else is saying the same thing. Yeah, too. interesting. <laughs> you think it's the employees. Yeah, the big heavy boxes. And, you know, since Walmart was known for having clearance deals, I bet the managers that are managing their electronic sections were like, F it. I don't want to deal with this product anymore for somebody walking by every day and asking, can I get this for $50? Can I get this for 75 bucks? I saw another Walmart do that. Because there were some stores where their inventory was so bad. Remember when I drove you in the middle of the night to, what was it, Compton or something? Yes. <laughs> we drove all the way out to Compton, California because the Walmart's app said they had an NBA jam for 200 bucks, and it said it was limited stock, but it had an aisle number on it. So I was like, everything in my previous experience means that it's there. And so I went and I started looking around for it. And then I looked at the, the employee. And before I said anything, she walked, she looked at me. She's like, we don't have any arcade one ups. Like they already knew. She, she's like, you're like the sixth person today who's asking me about this. We have to update our inventory. So like, I think they're just like, like full of it for having arcade one ups on clearance at Walmart brick and mortar stores that Walmart might only do online retail versus having to take up space. So straight out of Compton, right? It was, it was funny. Straight out of stock. Straight out of Compton. stock in Compton. It was, it was, this, it was and um, they, they just never excited about, maybe it's just the LA area for any time there's those deals. I've heard fun, fun stories about people getting $50, star wars cabs and the employees even helping them walk out the store saying like you got a great deal nope and la people are stingy if they don't get a deal you're not getting a deal the employers are like nope that's not supposed to be right i'm gonna go check on this like they're they have attitude and i hate some of the walmart employees in my local store too i had big big issues with some of them um but that's a, a story for another side customer service is a big thing all right did i miss anything else in here um god i hate one ups so much very much i'll calm down peace <laughs> so hard thanks for joining in locking in uh lacking it's non-existent you're right yeah it's non-existent there's there's just like this there's no official word right there's all kind of subtle minor things that they post about their official channels like check out the listing but it's not addressing any of the concerns so that's that's always a major thing that's um disappointing from them all right junk 
All right, go ahead. There are still. Which one? True story. Last year, I drove three hours to a small town in Texas for Star Wars stand up for $50 bucks. When I arrived, they had them in the back where five people they're they're looking for it <laughs> wow three hours and then there was already people looking for it that's uh so did you end up getting it zero hero but um yeah that's wow yeah that's uh bugs at that point they're like just get rid of it so it was a pricing error so if, if you can find them oh. in stock it wasn't pricing error like if you found them in stock there you could get it for 50 bucks but what people were doing was they were ordering it online for full oh. price and then okay. telling them when they got there mm -hmm. that like, oh, I want to change my credit card so I can just use a different credit card. And so when they rescanned it for the in-store price, it would show up at 50 bucks. And then people were able to get it at $50 instead of 500 bucks that they paid the credit card for. So it was a credit card swap. I'm sure they eventually figured it out, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Rainwater guess so you probably recognize you from YouTube. <laughs> you're coming for RK with just because you're famous. That is that is so low key, and I don't think that it will ever happen to to our little family here. But I think it's uh it's a crazy to think that we actually have a decent following. But that's that's funny and if anybody ever does it. We do appreciate you. Yeah, thanks, Rainwater Games. Mike Cox says there are stores that took big losses by carrying RK1 up. Yeah, Gen 1, the small retail store FYE carried Gen 1 and it was disaster storing units and getting rid of them even at clearance price. Yeah, I can imagine any of the small chains that used to have them. It was it was tough to find floor space because floor space is valuable for an electronic manager or anybody that's managing that department. And if it's heavy and it's not moving, yeah, I just don't see it being great for that retail space environment unless you're a big box store like Costco that has them and can move them. Um, I haven't seen them at Costco in a long time either, but I'm sure at some point, you know, you get a lot more casual shoppers that might be interested in purchasing it at Costco than the casual shopper at Walmart. You know, you think about the Walmart customer base in terms of what they're looking for, purchasing at going to a Walmart. And they're not usually full price folks that would pay something at that retail. But if you go to Costco, nothing ever goes on sale at Costco, right? But those customers would see something and be more likely to buy something at full price, seeing the value for it. All right. So there are stores. Oh, yeah, that's right. So Zahar hates one up. He's an IRK man now. I know he finally jumped on the bandwagon. The deals, I guess. You never got lucky. I, I know I never got a $75 cab, but I got a $150 cab. I got an MK2 at 50, 150 bucks and my Ms. Pac Man at 150 bucks, which I thought was great for me. My gosh. Oh, he's an MBSX man. Sorry. All right, go ahead. What is, what is this? Okay, so Kongs are us. I've got 17 cabs and over 50 to 60%, you pay $200 or less. That's a lot of cabs. And so you could say you you are a bit of a super fan. I have, I have about 15? 10 cabs. No. No, it's above 10. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Go upstairs and count. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm sending Mrs. Ar Mrs. Kong's arrest on a, a mission. She's like, she's going to go count right now because uh, she doesn't believe me that I only have 10. She's going <laughs> to, we will come back and report because I uh, do arcade one up and then everything. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And including the Macross one, sending her on a mission, on a mission, on a mission. Okay. Let's see what else. Um, da -da -da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> I arcade is great though. I respect them because they try no compromises because they care. And that's part of the, ex the experience with I arcade is that that connectivity and um, communication with Jong. So if, if you are missing and, and lacking, wanting that connectivity with a company and are looking for that communication, Jong is your man. I think he does the best job of any CEO really communicating. And it just, it'll take time for the games that you might want to get on that platform. But, you know, in terms of even me playing the IR Arcade, I'm limited because of the, the control game style. It's, it's, you know, a traditional six buttons, two joystick controls, and, and you can only play a certain number of games with that style of control, and I, I like a lot of unique controls. All right, so what's the, what's the count of, of cabs that we have? You have 12 Arcade 1-Up cabs and 16 total. 12 arcade one ups and 16 total. All right, I didn't, I didn't realize I had that many. So I'm up to 16 total cabs, including my pinballs too? Including the pinball machines. All right. Did you count the pinball machine that's in my room too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have three pinball machines and then I guess 13 cabs. Yeah. 12 of them are arcade one up. So there's yeah. a lot. Brad D, what's up, man? I'm good on the shooter cabs. I might imagine a lot of people will be looking for T2 whenever it becomes available. Personally, I'm waiting to jump on Tron. Yeah. So I might be selling a lot of my stuff soon 
to make room for some of these other ones. Tron looks really fantastic. The the upgraded render that they have. I forgot to take a snapshot before it went down, but yeah, I'm really excited about Tron too. But Brad, you would you would be a good on your shooting cab because I want to do your pedestal build and I like your aliens build too. All right, for the record, everything was a disaster for FYE. <laughs> they they are heavy as well. Absolutely, employees hate heavy. And let's one up. Do you think it's less expensive to have the real T2 guns rather than a light gun? It seems like they're doing it original way. Would be easier than using light gun tech. Not sure. What do you think? This is a good question. Like I I they already had the tech to do this. The yoke, the Star Wars yoke, has potentiometers in it where they could have easily used similar pots to create the analog signal. There's no calibration needed. I mean, there's some calibration that could be needed for it, but you could just have two pots and wire it into the concoder and you'd be done. Like the light gun tech is so finicky. You'd have to have a camera now. You have to have a border. You have to make sure the camera syncs to everything. There's so many more variables to having a light gun than having it be a positional analog controller. I think there's more issues that they're gonna get from having accuracy. I, I don't know how many times you've, heard of buck hunter players saying that i'm shooting a screen and sometimes it doesn't register can you imagine having a cursor on a screen and trying to move your uzi and then all of a sudden it doesn't move to that location it's because the lighting of your your situation if there's a window behind you is going to impact the send in tech if it's not using ir technology so yes absolutely i think they would have been better off using positional analog things than using light gun tech only gen one keeping final fight and i modded it soft spot for final fight i did too um, but I didn't get the, any of the Gen 1 cabs. You're a cab poor. 24 cabs! Todd Cottrell has 24 uh, cabs. There you go. I didn't even know there's... I don't know how many total cabs there are. Does anybody know the total number of RK 1UP cabs they, they are compared to the percentage total that people have? I'm kind of curious. I need to look it up. Including all the variants. See, there's so many variants. 10, counting the full size. Yeah. She comes back. Honey, you have 42 cabs. <laughs> Zero RK went up cabs. Oh, oh, wait. I didn't even count the ones outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. I have full-size cabs out there in my garage, too. I remember seeing Final Fight for a clearance days. Those were days. I looked everywhere when Bobby announced his mod contest, and I could not find a cheap one-up cab to gut. Mod deals come and go, for sure. All right. Six RK went ups two ad games, and a license. Uh, I archived in a box that's still in hiding. All right, Jong talks directly to us. Absolutely. Can find a cheap one up used or new under 250 around here to mod. That's true. Jong is one of us. He is. He's great. This was my, that was my first time ever talking to John on Jong on uh, P Dub's live stream. So I definitely would love to connect with him and, and provide him some more feedback too, because I gave him a little bit of constructive feedback during that that um live stream. But I know he's listening. That's the great news about it. Him and PK too. PK actually message me on Skype and uh, we've had some conversations. So having even a conversation with any CEO of a company is always an honor when they when you see them, right? That's what you want to see in leadership to provide that vision and communicate with your 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 fan base, your employees and groups. And I think PK and um, both Jong really, really do that. So I think that's one great thing yeah, that at games. Even said, yeah. yeah, Jong would, uh, has a passion, would rather do something right than quickly. And he's and he's like honest about it too, which is really cool too some point. <laughs> Did you like listening to to Jong a little bit when you joined for a quick couple of minutes? Yeah. Yeah. He's very energetic. Yeah. Um, uh, and then he's all, she's also seen him karaoke too, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I showed her some of the videos of their uh, Chicago um, Game & Brew, and I want to karaoke with Jong. That would be awesome if, uh, if he ever comes out to LA, and that would be really, really cool. All right. Uh, let's see. You got your final thought cap for Black Friday at 150. Uh, my car says, I might be interested in Arcade 1-Up Dragon Slayer, but probably won't buy anything after that until they finally do Totono USA. Um, yeah, what happened to the Dragon Slayer cabs? We've not seen any pricing for that too. And that's one of those ones where a lot of people are excited about that in Space Ace, um, but it just disappeared. It's not been said about anything since the, those were officially announced too. So those are the ones that are are most, most crazily interesting that they don't exist. Um, so who knows? Yo could become a railgun shooter. It does. My arcade one-up Star Wars mod, I play T2 all the time with it, and it looks really great. <laughs> Sorry says, I'm a loser. I only have one MBSX, a Legends Gamer Pro, MK Legacy, and soon an I arcade. You're giving your legacy to the die for, though. Interesting. Uh, for as much of a, a fan you are, Zohar, I'm surprised you don't have more cabs. I'm really interested. B, what, what mod would you do on your I arcade if you not mentioned doing anything yet? Yeah, I don't have any mods done to it um, because the buttons and things are, are good. I would think about finding a way to get um, maybe a lit marquee on it. I think Mad Dad's Gaming Gene did an awesome lit marquee on the IR Arcade, which is really cool. So uh, the 
the looks of the cab, honestly, though, by the way, in, ter in terms of the first time you're looking at it, since it's not a traditional looking Western arcade, it's a candy cab, right? It's more of a Japanese style sit down and, and style cab with the speakers in your face. I think a lot of people weren't used to the design and I wasn't either. So yeah, I was thinking of doing a marquee that kind of like brings it out towards you a little bit. And then that way, Can I that, oh, I do. Um, mochi. Mochi. Tasty, tasty. But I might do that. Mm, but other than that, I don't know what else I would do to it because it already has beautiful artwork applied. There's not much I would do because otherwise you'd lose a lot of the functionality inside the cab. It already has a 19 inch screen. I don't see anything else you would do to it. I just rubbed my eyes. Oh no. I would know you had a good comment on that. Thanks for answering. Cool. Thanks, Endless One Up. What is up? All right. Wish they had the license for Gun for R over Sinden. Did I miss a super chat? I did. Yeah, that was P Dubs, what's up, P Dubs? Live long and prosper so you can afford the next wave of arcade one ups. P Dubs, thanks so much for being here and for the super chat. I actually was doing like, um, we watched Star Trek, uh, the movie, the, the JJ Abrams version, so I can get my kids into it because they are, are wondering what Star Trek is. And it was the easiest one for them to digest. And I was trying to get my son to do this, and he's like, I can't. So remember the first time, like how many of you guys can actually do this? Can you do this pretty well? Yeah. Anybody have issues doing this? <laughs> uh, I remember doing that as a kid. I was like, yes, we can do it. I have issues doing this where you're supposed to bend your pinky mm -hmm. and just your pinky, but my ring mm. fingers goes down too. Mm. Like, <laughs> just bend your pinky. <laughs> Let's still do it. All right. Mm. All right. One up thinking about picking up a legends pinball. Do it. Do it and mod it. Watch my video and you can see everything that you can do to it. So I have to put the arcade mod up 19 inch monitor to Pi 4 upgrade and final fight. That's a good mod to do. Arcade mod up, I think they're just um it's another name for GRS, the game room solutions guys, but that's that would be a good great upgrade to do. Number fluctuates with these Costco variants. Oh, 42 is the ultimate answer. Yes, 42 is the answer to the universe. You know that, right? What's that from? Oh, Hitchhiker Guide. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, 42. Zohar has the most, has machines from every company. 33 one-ups, 20 of them are Pac-Man. <laughs> uh, that is true. There's a lot of, there's a lot of Pac-Man caps. Oh my God. Can you imagine? I wonder if there's anybody out there that collects every single variant of Pac-Man. That would be crazy. If there's a Pac-Man fan, I'm sure there's at least 20 RK one-up Pac-Man machines out there at some form. I have to give a plot plug. So last night I decided to put some deep, doTERRA deep blue rub, mm -hmm. which is like, like icy hot, but on steroids on my back. And I just scratched my back and scratched my eyes. And now your eyes burning? Burns. Yeah, oh, and no. I was like, wow, this thing is like, actually, I still feel a tingly warmness. So can you go rub your eyes? Doterra's deep blue rub. Doterra's deep blue rub. Yes, yes, yes. Only 20 Pac-Mans. I'm almost sure the gun is dual use. The gun is docked for T2. And you pull the gun up for another light gun game, therefore the wires. That's a really good, interesting point. If they add other non-positional light gun games on there, you know, then the, then the sky is a little bit more open for, um, yes, this is a compromise so that you can look like T2, but then have it so that you can play other light gun games. What are the good classic light gun games you can play? There's a lot. There's a, there's a ton of classic ones you can play. Police Trainer, you know, the Lethal Enforcer games. But I mean, you're holding an Uzi though, and it has an extra button. So you have a, an ability to press another grenade button or, or something else. I didn't know there's an emoji for Ooh, it. Oh, that's cool. Blue Chick has a little emoji for the Live Long as Poster. Yeah, John connected and knew who he was. Um, I think he's seen a couple of my videos, so I'm always I was happy to connect with with John. Watches and listens. Yep. So hard. Think it'd be awesome if everybody had Pac-Man cast, but not everyone. IRK simply isn't my thing. It's ugly, and the game line doesn't appeal to me. All right, we gotta we gotta see if we can convince Philly Chick to add the IRK into her collection. It definitely is a little bit on the quote unquote ugly side for the the shape, but some of their designs are make it look really good in terms of the artwork the retro mania one right that oh, you saw yeah but the, even like the one that we have the dragons there it's awesome right it's a beautiful piece of artwork the quality of it has lovely daphne on the side of it even though it's not the it traditional look, arcade yeah, it doesn't look like um if you look at it compared to the arcade mm -hmm. one up it doesn't have that sticker feel to it. Yeah, yeah, it feels it, really good quality. Yeah. You can almost scratch it, and it's like I don't know what kind of a sticker vinyl they're using, but it's really awesome. That's that was the most premium arcade artwork ever put out. And the kids have like scratched beat it, it. Up and like yeah. Bobby says there's a 26 inch Unico 43 ratio coming out in October. Oh, I think I saw Retro Rock posting about this. It's a you know how CRTs are really big. 
<laughs> so it's um they potentially might be coming up with a CRT replacement that's a four three scale monitor so that it can be used in arcade cabinet stuff. That would be really cool. P Dub Strong said um, should do an IR arcade console, even a control deck pedal scale combo. Yeah. I think I'd like to see other products from IR Arcade potentially. I know they have so much going on with their console version of it, but one thing, I mean, I'll just give feedback honestly for people that are listening and, and willing to hear it, but you know, the IR Arcade format of going live every week with the formula of one more thing and, and seeing kind of what new games are released, uh, it's, getting re it's getting slightly repetitive in terms of how they're releasing things. I would like to see some more creativity on how they release things to keep it more exciting because the fan base is rabid and I love joining Jong's live streams for the one more thing, but then I almost want to wait 40 minutes into the stream till he gets to the one more thing instead of kind of the lead up for it, right? So it's it's not, there's no more surprise element anymore. We're coming to expect it and it's part of his culture. Um, but I would I would love for him to step up and find some new ways to do one more things and, and do some more game announcements and things. Um, that would be like one of my other feedbacks for, for their model, but uh, I'd be interested in seeing what else they have going on. All right. Um, See, P Dubs, Mrs. Kong Zuras has your new cosplay costume. <laughs> we got, we got to send some pictures to P Dubs so he can, uh, you know, do a try on haul with your Deanna Troy outfit. John should, oh, that we already talked about that one. B, have you watched any of the new Netflix He Man, Her Man, He Man series? I have not yet. I do have to check it out. Um, I was, I, I was a little bit of a Masters Universe fan. Were you ever a He Man or She Ra fan? No. I have the power. Too busy watching my Sailor Moons. Ah, uh, that's true. Ah, uh, okay. But yeah, I definitely have to watch. I haven't watched it yet. Play Street Fighter Legacy, Mortal Kombat Legacy, still in the box, just no more space to put them. Space is the big, big issue. I can't wait on my 26-inch 4.3 monitor coming soon. Yeah, it's coming soon. I think they would mount it further back, but it'll need to be tall riser. Yeah, because the line of sight is going to be an issue if they don't raise it up. That's going to be an issue for the cab itself. Yeah, because like, it, you know where the arcade went up? Thing is, imagine this was like here. Right, I'm standing up now, and now I'm going like this the whole time. <laughs> so that's what you would be doing essentially with the T2 if, you, if the, the the what if the thing wasn't taller. Only kids I'm interested in our new wave would be Tron, Class of '81, maybe Big Blue, like Dragon's Lair and Space Ace. What on earth happened to Killer Instinct updates? Yeah, there there's no official updates, but at least it was on the listing. We saw a price point for it, so it looked like it was going to be about that 650 price point as well um, and it looked good the new shape of the cab design was updated from the midway legacy design so that that was super super good news all right oh my god all right so chat is rolling and i'm really behind now so once you again philly chick you have to play one to get one you guessed sailor moon you were right yay um so after 48 hours two tap is growing on me is it dubs that's interesting i'm curious to hear about your reasonings for it um dubs don't do it killer instinct has me excited geez man arcade went up have hired 2000 20 000 a year ceo making company new direction aka bank just like sega yeah we've not heard anything from scott either it's been a long time scott their ceo used to join sometimes live streams and did a show with ralph um but yeah it's been a while since we've heard anything from him the last thing he was promoting the last time we heard anything from him when he was promoting the infinity game table like really hard and uh, i got one i stopped to do a review with it but i haven't I watched the first five episodes of He-Man and you hated it. Ah, oh, P-Dubs usually hates it. <laughs> uh, I heard it was very Tila based. So um, a lot of, lot of emphasis on Tila instead of He-Man. So Zohar, they're here, the Porter guys, 20 Pac-Mans. All right, P-Dubs arcade show, just couldn't get into it. Asked Kotoi, he said he enjoyed it. That means uh, Jeff Water loves it, P-Dubs. <laughs> Excited to see it. P-Dubs tastes are most like mine in home arcade stuff. It's trash and ruins the He-Man man. There's a lot of He-Man folks in the chat. So for sure, we got to get onto that so I can know. I'm more of a more of a robot guy. So the 80s classics were, were more Voltron and Robotech and anything with ships and things. I liked He-Man for, for what it was, but I liked the transforming toys. I was a Transformers guy more than I was a He-Man guy. I don't think I've ever hated anything except the giant joysticks and HDMI consoles. I have point out opportunities for improvement, Garage Gamer. Uh, you, you do, you often say there's opportunities for improvement, and my, they have a lot of opportunities for improvement. The Dragon Slayer artwork looks good. The cab design, Kev Grit for IR Arcade, I would still venture to say if you looked at the shape of it, is uglier compared to, you know, the form factors that the newer RK one ups and and even MBSX like that look like a Neo Geo cab. We've never seen anything like IR Arcade 
on the market before. It's not something that you nostalgic look at and say, oh, I want that. You have to kind of grow into it. So the artwork really helps make that piece um, really pop. We should rub some of that cream on RK1UP's imagination and maybe we'll stop getting six new variations. Talking about your, uh, your, um, your other cream thingy. It needs to have Revolution X with Terminator 2, please, John D. I agree. I agree. If there's anything that John D is listening to, I hope he's hearing some of the feedback on these leaks because there's there's no way they're not seeing this, right? We're on their social media. We're on their official global page. I'm sure they're soaking up this free focus group feedback on what they want, but I don't know if they're taking any direction and doing anything with it. We're giving them so much feedback. Space Ace artwork makes me want to get an RA cape. It looks really awesome. I like the Space Ace one when I, when I saw it for the first time on the rooftop bar. So I'll have to check out the He-Man remake. It was more of a fan of toys and 80s show itself. We're going on pretty long. You want to end pretty soon? Yeah, I got to yeah. let the kittens out. Got to let the kittens out. All right. But well, we're going to get ending pretty soon. I'm just going to double check and see if there's anything else that I miss in chat. Um, you have. I watch, watch. There's a lot of He-Man talk, talk. I got to gotta get to He-Man. Play sticks, spinners. Sticking and button arcades can only go so far. Play sticks, guns, spinners, trackballs, the kind of stuff that makes it really unique. I agree, Brad. So that's why anything else that gets into my collection at this point has to have some unique arcade controls. So that's why oh. T2 was really, really awesome. P-Dubs is going to give his reasons on why that T2 can Check have. out P-Dubs on the I Hate Monday show. It's coming on tonight, P-Dubs, or are you going on tomorrow? Because usually uh, you come on on different times. So uh, sometimes it's on Monday, sometimes it's on Sundays. But uh, yeah, let it, let us know so that I can make sure you promote it. But I, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing that. Uh, Netflix, He-Man transformation syncs up with Sailor Moon transformation. Do you want to do your best Sailor Moon transformation for everybody? No, because you get naked, don't you? <laughs> no, just the movement of it. No, I'm good. You're good? She's yeah. like, no. She's like, no, I put her on the spot. Like She she does that sometimes. She's like, moon, prism, power, makeup. Is that right? I don't even know where you've seen me do the transformation. I've seen you do the transformation. Oh, in fact, I have Mrs. Kong's or us. I bought her a full Sailor Moon outfit too. Is that something that, I don't know when we would be able to loop that into some sort of content for us. <laughs> it's not <laughs> arcade, arcade related. Does, um, As I, yeah, does any, if anybody does a Sailor Moon arcade game at some point or game. There's Sailor Moon video There is a Sailor games, Moon yeah. video game that we could There's play. So many, yeah as Mrs. Kong's Arrest has the full-on Sailor Moon wig too. I bought her the wig, the full outfit. And it was it was for actually Halloween because our daughter really wanted to, to be Chibi Moon. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be interesting. What was that? All right, grew up with He-Man. Check the link. Watch Mrs. Kong's face when Kong said 19 inches earlier. That was a lot of questions on why they call you Kong. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> King Kong. King Kong. Oh my God. Yes. Sailor Moon, Mrs. Kong. Pretty Soldier, Sailor Moon. Pretty Soldier. I agree with 19K Fox. It went up, always seems to leak something when they detect I added on an IRK <laughs> to my shopping cart. <laughs> yes. The, they, they are always leaking things. It's weird how these leaks have been happening. It's really interesting, their model for getting information out. Sailor Moon needs to happen. Yes. 100%. Tila's haircut is so stunning and brave. Speaking of Macross, you're up last night buying Valks while you're intoxicated. Yes, Macross Valks. The VF1D is coming out too. I need to get it. But uh, oh, 19K Fox says Terminator 2 leak was intentional. RK One Up is diverting attention from Price Gate. Ah, who knows? It might be just a really weird way that they're they're doing it. But anyways, I think we're gonna end the stream. Been going yeah, on for a little while. Your second machine second is second machine died. Nice. Thank you so much for joining in on the Sunday Chill and Chat. Go check out P-Dubs, I Hate Monday Show, and uh, we will see you all next time, next week, here on Sunday Chill and Chat. Bye, everybody. Bye. See ya.